I have done a lot of experiments already, like putting my finger in a flesh-eating plant and tasting this disgusting looking ant food. Very surprisingly, this actually tasted disgusting. In this video, I'm continuing these very scientific experiments by putting gum, aw oh, damn it. I'm putting gum in nature and seeing what happens with it. Now where's my Nobel Prize? I promise it's worth a watch. Now of course, I'm not going into real nature. That would be way too hard. Instead of that, I'm making my own nature. And for that, we have to go in nature. And I'm risking my life here for you guys. Okay, maybe not my life, but at least my street cred. You all know dogs, right? Those four-legged drooling things. Well, dogs poop and owners don't always clean this up. Well, it's one thing that people see me filming myself collecting moss. But it is another that people see me filming myself accidentally grabbing dog shit while collecting moss. Now of course, this is all hypothetical. That totally didn't happen for real. So first I'm gonna build a paludarium and then I'm putting in the gum and seeing what happens over time. Normally when I build these things I just go in without a plan and wing it. But this time I made a very detailed and realistic drawing. Is there anything I can't do? I mean I'm an expert at making videos. I'm clearly a master at designing and drawing stuff. The only thing I'm not that good at is sarcasm. Okay. Now we know what we need, let's get back into nature. I also needed some wood, and when I saw this, I thought to myself, damn, that's a nice foot. I mean wood. It has some small holes in it, which means there are animals inside, and that is exactly what we need. The soil will contain a lot of animals, microorganisms, seeds and spores. Close up of the shroom for no reason, you're welcome. Back home in my garden I saw this. And now I don't know why I go out anymore. I have this perfect moss at home. What else would you need? There is a small centipede on there. Do you see it? If you don't see it now, you might need glasses. Or I need a better camera. Now, as a biologist and an idiot that just touched these, I can tell you, these efforts haven't stolen their name. Time to collect some springtails. You can do this by shaking some wet leaves above a container. Fair warning, if you do this in public, you will get some weird looks. These people are walking in nature. And then I am the weird one for shaking some leaves above a container while filming myself. Isn't this ice pot cute? I saw something weird moving beneath it. This, this here, is Bob. And Bob is another species of springtail. Here he is compared to the other ones. But of course, I like Bob the most. Happy holidays by the way. My gift to you is this crappy video. Your gift to me is liking this crappy video. Do it. Do it now. Yeah, I thought the terrarium was bigger. Unfortunately, this is not the first time I thought something is bigger than it actually is. I will have to use a smaller piece of wood. That is better. And now we can finally start the build. I will have to look at my detailed plan, what the first step is. Apparently, I should wave at you. Okay, check. Next step is to add the drainage layer. I'm using these clay balls for that. But as you can see, my balls are dirty, so I need to wash them first. This drainage layer is very important, especially in a paludarium. It will hold the excess water and will make it possible for me to make a pond. You guys are probably tired of seeing me adding balls in a terrarium, so I fast forward a bit. To separate the soil from the drainage layer, I'm cutting this mesh into a perfect rectangle. As you can see, it fits like a glove. I mixed some of the clay balls into the soil. According to the package, this will help aerate the soil a bit. And this is very important. This soil is full of life. This means a lot of plants and animals will hatch and grow from it. After those balls, of course, wood can be forgotten found a worm, and no, that's not sweat, that's water. Worms will also help aerate the soil and they will produce nutrients for the plants by shitting. The soil layer is ready, so now it's time to start on the pond. Here I'm putting sand. 
This is also very important because I like the beach. Don't worry, this video will still get interesting at uh, some point. So please keep watching. Since I'm building nature, of course, it needs rocks. Such rock, so natural. I'm putting in this stick so animals that fall in the water can get out again. I collected a huge bag of moss. Again, fair warning, you will get weird looks when you run around with this in public. And you might be stopped by the police. Again, all hypothetical of course. Yes, we're at everyone's favorite part of the video again. Adding moss. I mean, padding moss. Springtail has fallen into the pond area. Apparently it's not easy to get out of there. So before I add the water, I will have to make sure I don't drown anything. I also saw this beetle, but I don't know what species it is, so I don't know what it eats. That is why I'm releasing it, so it doesn't starve. Yeah, I should have waited with putting that stick in. Again, stupid stick. Ah, oh, damn it, now my moss is dirty. This looks like a terrarium with some moss thrown into it. I don't know why people keep watching my videos, because I keep shoving plants in your face. This is a fern, and you should have seen it coming, because it's very clearly visible on the drawing. I'm adding some more moss, but don't worry, I'm almost done, because here is a rock. I collected a plant out of one of my other terrariums. It is a bit shriveled, but that's because it is cold out. Guys will understand. I'm adding the last few pieces of moss and then it's time to fill up the pond and add the animals. If you want more of this boring content, go check out my Patreon page, the link is in the description. A few dead leaves and then it's time to add the water. The water was already running away in the rest of the drainage layer. You can see that here. This looks okay I guess. Now we can add the animals. And the first one I'm gonna add is the spider, because it's gonna escape otherwise. Oh right, arachnophobia warning I guess. You're probably wondering what the hell is this. People that have seen other videos of mine probably know. Yes, these were banging millipedes, like always. But this is another species than I get normally in my terrariums. I found them in my garden while banging. So even in the wild, they're wild. This slug is the biggest animal that is going in. Damn, she's fast. This one is probably going to eat all my plants. And there goes the rest of the animals, including Bob. Now it's time to put in the gum. But of course I need something to compare, so I'm also putting in a piece of cucumber and a dead cricket. This is one of the crickets I normally feed to my ants. There we go. 8 minutes into the video and the experiment can finally start. I'm putting the gum on a dead leaf because I don't want it to F up my moss. So this is officially day 1 and that is an escaping spider. I'm just gonna give regular updates now. On day 3, a piece of the cucumber was already eaten, but a bit later I found the culprit. This snail is enjoying a nice snack. Also the cricket has been partially eaten. I spotted a mystery animal that might be responsible. I'm not sure what it is, but it might be a roof beetle. Let me know if anyone knows. The gum hasn't been touched, which is understandable because you don't know where the thing has been. Oh right, it has been in my mouth. Yeah, I wouldn't touch that either. On day 4, I saw this one running away from the cucumber. And also the cricket has been eaten more. But the gum, still nothing. On day 6, I saw the snail munching away on the cucumber. And the cricket is now just an empty shell. A bit like me. On day 8, some mold started growing on the cucumber and the cricket. But this is nothing that the springtails can't handle. Even mold doesn't want to grow on the gum. I don't know what that says about my mouth. On day 15, the cucumber is almost gone. And the cricket has turned into a porcupine. The gum, still nothing. I'm starting to see a trend here. You know the drill, day 40. Cucumber gone. Cricket still porcupine. Gum, nothing. 
After this in-depth research, I can conclude it takes a long ass time for gum to decompose. Moral of the story, don't throw your shit in nature. This was my presentation, thank you for listening. Like always, don't click off, click on this video on the end screen, it will help me a lot. Thank you to all patrons and everyone that watched. Happy holidays and I'll see you next year.